supportive person. When the Bible is saying 30 fold, 60 fold, he's the 100 fold guy. That's the effective guy, you know. Um, he, he's getting the results. Um, and obviously, we know there can be bad habits, like gossiping. Eh? The Bible talks about it in 1 Timothy 5.13. It says those all that be gossiping house to house, they'll be going around. Conscious. So, I'm not a scientist, but I have read that there's the conscious brain and the subconscious brain. And the subconscious brain is what controls us generally. So, if, if, if um, you don't... You don't think when you are eating. You don't think when you are doing certain things because your brain subconscious part has understood it. When you are going home, you are not using Google Maps. You're, you know the way automatically it has entered your brain. But in the beginning, it wasn't so. In the beginning, it was not a habit. In the beginning, you had to go through um, it. So um, we need to understand um, that particular part. So habits always start a thought with a thought. Habits will always start with a thought. All right? So if we want to change our habits, we are going to have to change our thoughts. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. I'm going, into the, I'm going to talk about five different habits, but you know, when we talk about it, I want you to start to apply it to my life that some of these things I'm going to hear, how am I going to imbibe it? And I'm letting us know that it, it starts with a thought. So if your somebody has been doing something in a certain way, if he is going to create a new habit, he is going to have to cancel that old thinking and he's going to have to replace it with new thinking. He's going to have to, and that's why the Bible says we should not be conformed to the thinking of this world. That's why we can be different because we are operating on a different software. We're operating on something different. So habits always start with a thought. Even though people think they're doing, but it always starts with a thought. All right? So um, when we say we want to start reading our Bible, we want to start praying every day, we want to start doing all of those things, there needs to be a standing, first of all, in your, mind, in your heart. It needs to enter you that this God will have me do part time, and then over time, you're able to build these habits. Um, I remember there was a time I was, um, um, and, and this is the Christian advantage that we have. I remember there was a time I, there was a, a habit I wanted to stop. And, you know, I would try and they would, I would go back to it. I will try and they will go back to it. But I remember there was an anointing service we had and I prayed. And I, it, it almost as if God automatically took that one away from me because I just lost interest in that thing. All right, and that's the Christian advantage. All right, everything I'm in here, we always want to make sure that we understand that we have a Christian advantage. Uh, we have a Christian advantage to it. All right, so um, if we are going to be highly effective people, are going to be the person that in this 2023, that is a new dawn. I'm going to achieve purpose. I'm going to achieve the things God has called me to do. There are certain things I want us to look at. I want to expose us to a few thoughts. As I have said, your habits will change from a new thought. So I want to expose us to some thoughts, not, not necessarily new, you know them, but some thoughts that will help you in this changing your habits process. How many of us would like to change one or two of our habits? How many of us would like to be more effective, we would do more, um, things more effectively? All right. So, um, and, uh, let, let's start. The first habit of highly effective people. The first thought of highly effective people is that they think. I already said a, a new habit starts with a thought. The first effective habit of highly effective people is that they think. Genesis 1 is, if I was, I mean, this is life service, so I'm not going to be heavy on scriptures, but Genesis 1 is the template for a highly effective model. In the beginning, he said the, the spirit was hovering over, it was brooding. There is a time of meditation. There is a time of thinking. For me personally, every Sunday night, so my calendar, I have for the year, I have the calendar for the month, 
But when I get to the week, I now open that calendar more. I now start looking at it day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. That's why when people call me and try and add me to something that I'm not part of, it's very difficult. I, I, because I have a goal. I have a target. I mean, we've also learned that when you in that calendar, don't plan everything 100% to leave some, because you are not uh, omnipotent, omnipotent, everything, no. Leave some room for margin because some, some emergencies may come. But highly effective people plan. They think. They are always very, very intentional from that thinking process. And you know, as, as I said, we saw it even before God spoke. Genesis 1 and 2. It was, there was a hovering. There was a brooding. There was a meditation. There was a, 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 a coming down. Is settling down. We are always running. Ah, they said this is happening. There is fuel in both us. There is this, is this, there is this. And we keep running and running and running and running. And we move from one to the other. But you see, in that place of quietness, in that place of stillness, you are able to get an advantage. Because 95% of other people are not thinking. As easy as it sounds, thinking is not easy. And so the moment you enter that thinking mode generally you've differentiated yourself so what are you what is the application point you need to start to create time to think as i said mine usually at the end of the day i journal and i this is the second time i'm coming here to say i'm, I'm journaling and i'm i will quit it and then i'll start it but the point is i journal in the evening i write what i'm grateful for i write what has happened i write the lesson since I've learned, give me time to think and then what I want to do again. So, please let us understand. You know, Luke 5, 16. Jesus was in a habit of going to a quiet place. It's in that quiet place you pray. It's in that quiet place you receive from God. It's in that quiet place you know. Alright? So, it is very important. It's in that quiet place you're looking at what am I doing short term? What's going to be the long term plan? You cannot afford to be like everybody else in 2023. Just moving, spending a lot of time on WhatsApp. And, and trust me, the way the world is formed, you cannot be bored. CNN will keep showing you the same news until a new news comes out. And yet, we'll keep watching it. If your premiership plays, they will keep showing the replay. So it, it, there is enough to distract us. So we have to do that. And that's why God was also very specific about the Sabbath. You know, he was very, very specific about Sabbath. There needs to be a shutting down. There needs to be a time to plan. There needs to be a time to reflect. All right? So that's the first one. The second one, and as I said, the application point, because is, I'm not just here to tell us what they are, but how you will now say, okay, mine, thank God, we're now doing the early morning prayers. We wake up five, we pray 5.30 to 6. Between 6 and 8, when your phone starts to ring, grand, 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 can we keep some time out? Can we take some time out? You know, we just have to, everybody has different schedules. So we have to find the best time for us. The second one is that highly effective people, are, they have the end in mind. You know, they, what you call vision. They are very, very strong on vision. They are very, very, they, they have clarity. And like I said, if I'm going to Lagos, and I know it's Lagos. I'm, there is nothing you do to make me follow you to Ilori. But if I don't know I'm going to Lagos, I may follow you to Ilori tomorrow and I'll follow somebody else to Asaba the next day. Because uh, the end is not clear. And so distractions will come, things will come, and they are not bad things. Your friend is doing this, your this is doing that. It's okay. But highly effective people have the end in mind. They are visionary. They know what they are looking for. They are very clear. And, you know, what I'm saying to us is that please let us be, don't just do New Year's goal. New Year's goal is too far. It's a whole year. Have week goals. Have month goals. You know, have them very clear. These are things that if you interview, and this is the part that always make, I, and I like to say this, the children of the world do not know God, but they kind of have learned his ways. They don't know the person but they know his ways. They know his principles. So they succeed. If you ask the billionaires in this world, all these things I'm saying is on their list because they, they don't play with time. 
You can't just, just, you know, sometimes I, if, when I was doing service, I used to work in Lagos. So, third me land, one hour, I get to audio books. I was listening to, I, it was one hour free, go like that, never. One hour should just go away. I, I can lose money, I mustn't lose time. And so, it's that sort of thing that we must have very clear, all right? So, um, you won't get sidetracked. You, and then another thing I noticed is that when your vision, when you have a strong vision, even when issues come, because issues always come, you know, it's not if they come, it's when they come. Because your vision is so strong, you'll be able to overcome them. You know, your dreams must be bigger than your challenges. Challenges will come. But when your dream is set on, then you can focus. But you see, when that dream is not clear, you know, um, it's, 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 you, you will probably change your mind when things come. Um, for me, personally, I always knew I was going to go into politics. What I never saw was that I would go into it when I was 27. And so before I got married, I told my wife, you think you're marrying a lawyer, but you're not actually marrying a lawyer. I know God has called me to government. I know. And then we got married in July. In August, I got a call. In September, I started working government. So I was very clear. I, I didn't know when, but I knew this was where my life was going towards. And that's the sort of, in, and that's why when the opportunity came, I didn't have to pray too much. Yeah, is it, uh, mm, because I had heard, I knew, and I was working towards it. And so we must be that intentional about these things. Um, um, obviously, uh, um, God himself in this um, Genesis 1 model knew what he wanted to create. He had seen what he wanted. And he started to speak it in verse 3. All right. The third thing that highly effective people do is that they take action consistently. There are many of us that we are used to, ah, I want to, I will, if I can. When I, when I, when I grow up, when I'm 28, when I'm, you know, we, we keep dreaming, but we don't take action. Many people some the English people say analysis to paralysis. They've analyzed everything. Oga, step in the water. Take that first step. And not just the first step, and the second, and the third, and the fourth. There needs to be that action consistently if you're going to be effective. Because there are times you will not feel like it. There are times that your mood will not feel like you should do anything. But effective people don't work with emotions. They work with vision. They work with, with, with plans. They go out there. They do it. And they don't do it once in a while. They do it consistently. And so as you plan 2023, you have this dream, you have this vision, you're going to have to take action consistently. In the Genesis model, I was telling you, Jesus kept saying, I, I said Jesus, God kept saying, let there be, let there be, let there be. He didn't say let there be once. He kept creating. He was a consistent model. And he was taking action. So if you're going to be highly effective, um, a highly effective person, you have to have the habit of doing. You know, I, there's a book I read. I think it's called Execution. He said that's what differentiates the 5% from the 95%. Many other people can plan. Uh, that's even if they plan. But you see the guys that get it? It's the doers. The Bible says you should, you should not just be here as alone. You should, the blessing is in the doing. Hmm? Um, and the, 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 what's it called for faith is the obedience. So let's, let, let us um, have that state. Look at the wicked judge. That woman kept bothering the guy. The guy said, ah, if for nothing else, so that this person that is taking action constantly will not injure me. You better give her what she wants. That's persistent. That's action. That's consistent action. All right? In every organization, there will be 80-20, as they told us, the Pareto principle. The 20%, they are the doers. The remaining 80, they are shared there. They are part of the organization. So in 2023, I want to encourage us that in our goals, in the things God has called us to do, we must, we must be doers of what we have learned. Um, and then, what should you be doing? Because, like I said, we are living in a very busy world. Um, there's a book called um, um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, um, Stephen R. Covey. It, it shared that, you know, there's urgent, there's important. There's urgent, 
and not important. There is not important but urgent. You understand? There is urgent and important. So, in order of priority, please let us do what is important and what is urgent with the important. There are some things it's not your business. Delegate it. There are some things that is not for you. Give it to somebody else. A ringing phone sounds very urgent, but it may not be important. So, that's another thing. Just doing what everybody is doing. Ah, everybody is doing this now, let me do it. No, highly effective people don't work like that. It must be important. And how do you class importance? Something that is in line with God, as what God has told you. Something in line with your dream, your passion. That is important. That's what God will have you do. That's what you should be pursuing. All right? Um, so, highly effective people put first things first. All right? And please, as you plan for 2023, as you're going into the year, please be able to separate. I think what you should do when you get home, list all the things you do daily. All right? And start saying, which one can I pass on? Which one is important? Which one is... And then you will be amazed at what you see. There was a time I did that journal. I found out I was doing 37 different activities. There is no way you can be effective with 37 different activities regularly. So I was a pa I'm a parent. I'm a husband. I have this business. I have this business. I'm a lawmaker. I'm a this. I'm a that. And I counted it. CIC, this, that, 37. No, they didn't borrow me brain before I knew I was, there was no way I was going to be effective. So I started to prioritize this one yes this one yes this one no this one yes this one yes this one no this one yes this one and i was using the vision the goal to determine how to prioritize it so if we're going to be effective you have to do that sort of tearing apart and pulling down and pulling up so that you're not just doing the wrong things the fourth thing about highly effective people is they collaborate god said let us let us even God, there was collaboration there. The effective people don't do everything by themselves. They find ways. P, uh, PA, take. If it's not PA, partnership. Let me, I, I, my, I have a law firm. It's um, 13 years old now. Ironically, we started it in 2010. But I left for politics in 2011. So if it was only me, the business would have died. But it's not only me. Now we have almost 20 lawyers. Because there was a partnership. So effective people, they are able to collaborate with other people. We came into this world and look at children. We are very competitive. If you give a child something, try and collect it back in a few He said, no. Because we came in as with our nature was selfish, me, 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 me. But if you're going to be effective, you're going to realize it's not me, me, me. Some things are not for you. If it's not for you, delegate it, collaborate with some other people. If you want to share the burden, share the load. And I've seen it time and time again. Effective things, things that are big. They will say one is too small a number to achieve greatness. It's too small. If you're going to achieve greatness, you're going to be talking about people. You heard the one, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with people. You are going to need people. Relationships. And that's why sometimes when pastor is talking about the in about working with each other, family, building communities, building mission. People think it's a chore. It's the way God has planted us. It's a favor. Some of the prayers you are praying for, the person in your mission community has the answer. So please, let's collaborate. Let's, um, and the Bible is full of it. One will chase a thousand. Two will chase... Eh? You know, it's, 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 it's all over the place. Um, Ecclesiastes 2 says, you know, um, two is better than one. Eh? Three is even, even much better self. All right? So I think we need to understand um, this thing. I, I'm in politics right now, and a lot of the things I do, people say, ah, ah, how did you do this? How did you do this? I was lacking me. It's not me that did it. It's my team that did it. It's not me that did it. I cannot even take the glory for it. But as far as they are concerned, it's you that did it. But it really, really, I was in my house that day they were doing that thing. I was not there. But I have a team. I have people. I don't plan to be everything. There are people that their own, their own vision is being met by being on that team. So they are doing it. Some, <laughs> there are sometimes people who come here, ah, Shay, but we saw you here this morning. How come did you? I say it's not me that I, I cannot be everywhere. I will do the one that is important. Other people are doing 
So you achieve a lot more. Um, um, this. So what's the application point? Think about how you can collaborate with people. There are things God has put in your heart. Um, look for ways um, to collaborate and partner and not just compete. And you know the lie. People will steal my idea. People will do this. If they steal it, it's not the one you are supposed to do. Uh, Jacob kept dig- um, Isaac kept digging wells uh, until he got to rail boot. If they steal it, it's not the one that you are supposed to build. Don't be afraid. All those things are things that uh, I won't tell anybody. Uh, they will go and steal my idea. Uh, or God, bring the idea. Let's do something. So please do not, because uh, there is a lot of that. I can't work with people, uh, church people. Uh, church people, they are very bad people. They are very distant people. Uh, they Please, let us not put ourselves into conduct. The last thing I want to say before I um, go is that um, successful people, uh, highly effective people, they build systems. They build systems. They last. They, they, they are not for one season. If, uh, if you see someone that is truly effective, you will see that they, they outlive seasons. Mm? They are not, they, they are not uh, show and go. They are not one-time one, one time wonder. And why? Because they build system. One of the systems they build is personal development. One of the things they keep sharpening their sword. They keep becoming better. They keep taking time to become better versions of themselves. They do not leave it as, oh, I have arrived. I have achieved. No. You know, God evaluated what he had done. He said it is good. All right? They evaluate themselves. They build systems. And you know, when you evaluate, you see where you need to correct, you go again. With the corrected version, you see where you can improve. You go again, you know, until you're building a system that will outlive you. So, um, I, I mean, my own personal story. When I was in government, I did Ixan exam. When I told my boss, my boss said, "Why are you doing it? You don't need a job." I said, "I know, but I, I want to become a better secretary, uh, you know." And then I did masters. I was in a job, and I did masters. And my boss, when I told him, he said, "Masters, ah." This guy, I think you just like to read. I was like, I'm just developing myself. There will be a time I'll leave this job, but I must continue. So I kept, so I did masters. You understand? And then when I, when I finished masters, I did John Maxwell leadership. And then now I'm going for Tutu fellowship. And so it's not as if I don't, I don't want to enjoy in quotes. Oh, just real. no. Highly effective people, they keep training, they keep working themselves, they keep becoming better versions of themselves. They build systems that will last. God put the seed in the fruits. Hmm? God has put what will keep reproducing in it. All right? So the, you must build systems that can keep reproducing themselves if you're going to be a highly effective person. Your systems, you will evaluate them, you will look at them, and then you will improve on them all together. And then that way, whatever you build will outlive you. So these, these are five different things I wanted to share about highly effective people. Five things that will help you. And as I said, I didn't just say them for the sake of saying them. I'm saying them so that you can think, what am I going to change? All right? What am I going to do differently? How am I going to apply it? We, we, the third one was action consistently. All right? So there is no point if we say this and we don't take action. If you're going to be highly effective, you have to be able to use the Genesis 1 model to be able to get the results. And as I said in the beginning, there's a difference between efficiency and effectiveness. You can be efficient doing the wrong thing. Very efficient. Very, very efficient. It's just that that's not the assignment. So when you finish it, they will say, sorry, that's not where we said you should paint. You are painting this wall. This is the wall you said you should paint. All right? But effective people are not just if efficient. They get the goal. All right? They get where they need to go to, um, and um, they are able to achieve much, much results. So um, I think my time is up. Um, so do we take questions? How? No. Any, que- any questions? Do, do we have any, any questions? We spoke about... Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Minister Shea. Um, it looks interesting to be highly effective, but it also looks tough and difficult. Yes. 
So where is the balance? If you are doing all this, like you said, you said they had 30 something items. Don't you get tired? Don't you want to give up at some time? What drives you to continue in that part of trying to be better? Don't you ever get to a point to, to see that this is the best version of myself? All right, thank you, sir. Uh, um, the honest truth is that, like I said, the, I was burning out when I had to do this exercise. You know, one of the things I learned is we don't like to say no. Come and be here, yes. Come and be here, yes. Come and be here, yes. And sometimes it's a lack of, uh, you know, maybe not knowing what we are called for. We are not called to all men. Eh? Peter and Paul were called to different people. So we need to understand who we are called to. But we do get tired. And like I said in the beginning, when I was struggling with a habit, because I've mentioned good habits, there are times that you need to get rid of bad habits. You know, and that one, it was, it was a service. I was in a service, and I was praying. And, I, you know, the pastor prayed. Um, it was even an online service, I can't remember. And it just felt like I, was, I, I lost appeal for these things. All right? And that's the Christian advantage. So with the help of the Holy Spirit, um, I believe with wisdom, wisdom to be able to know that how Jethro told Moses, what you are doing is not good. You know, only you from morning to night. You have to be able to use wisdom and say, not everything is for me. And then God, which ones are the ones that you have me do? And you focus on those ones. And most times you will get joy and fulfillment when you are doing the ones you are called for. You will get joy and fulfillment. And joy is strength. Joy brings strength. You know, you will get joy and fulfillment for the areas that God will have you operating. But if you are doing too many things and you're getting too tired and worked up, maybe you need to check and do an audit and see really, am I, am I in God's will or in people's will? All right? Am I in God's will or in people's will? Because you can be in people's will. You are all things. Ah, they need me here. They need me here. They need me here. And then you burn out. And, and that's not God's desire for us. So, so, yes, we can get tired. Sometimes, you know, you just want to give up. But I believe the advantage we have is, is you know, the, the help of the Holy Spirit. But also in all of this planning, I, I, maybe I should have said highly effective people to rest. Uh, they rest. Uh, they, for they, they must rest. Because I, I said earlier on that in that place of planning and thinking, it's a quiet place. It's a, Jesus kept taking solitary times. Yes, in that flow, solitary time, what did he do? He prayed. You know, I, I'm sure he was also resting at points. You know, so he would say they should go to the other side. He would pray. He would relax. So there must be that balance in, in, um, in doing things. But most importantly, don't do things for everybody. Do the things that God will have you do so that you can be effective and you can achieve much. Thank you very much. Any, any other question? Uh, just one more and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. Baba. Um, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I just want to ask this um, on a bit of a lighter mode. Um, the Genesis model, how do you infuse it into the Nigerian dream? Into? Into the Nigerian dream. I mean, why am I saying this is, um, of course, you also, you, you put a lot of plans in place. You put a lot of budgets in. You do put a lot of things in place trying to run according to the things you've highlighted. Now, the Nigerian thing happens. How do you turn? <laughs> How do you find the balance? I think the Nigerian thing is that there are different uh, political wills. Eh? There is no one will. If we were all committed to the same dream, if we were all committed to the same interests, if, God, if everybody was saying, God has said we should go here, and we're all going there, then we'll achieve it. The children of Israel, when they left Egypt, some wanted to go back. Eh? I, and I, I most wanted to go back. Moses wanted to go forward. The leader is going forward. The people are going backwards. You will have challenges. All right? So one of the things we say in politics is political will. If somebody else passed the law and another person comes in, if doesn't feel like he, he has any interest, in going in that direction. So I think there's always a disconnect because it's, there is no continuity. They are not taking, it's not the same vision, it's not the same action, it's not the same, it, it's very different. Um, but most importantly, I think that's why we need strong leadership. Leadership that God 
has called and knows is visionary. He's taking us to where God will have us go to. On this note, I want to say thank you very much for being part of Life Service today. Uh, God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. We do appreciate you. If you are yet to subscribe to this channel, kindly do so by clicking the subscribe button so that you get updated whenever we post more edifying content on this channel. Once again, we appreciate you. Thank you and God bless you.